Good morning, everybody. Hope you're all doing fantastically well. It's Connor here. We are back with another One Leads episode. Make sure you're liking the video. Make sure you're subscribing. Make sure you're sharing to all your family and friends as well. It is Sunday. We're back here discussing Leeds United after a brilliant weekend. A brilliant weekend. Look, we've got the League Cup final today. If you like your football, you like your football. You're going to be sat there watching it. Um, the weekend has been great so far. Southampton losing out to Millwall yesterday. Looks like obviously Millwall maybe going to make a little bit of a resurgence with Joe Edwards leaving the building. That's going to be interesting with Leeds United having them up soon. Uh, Hull City as well seem to just be at this moment in time. They're a team that I just want to pinpoint, but the flying at this moment in time, um, it feels like they are getting to a point of which if you had to play them in the playoffs, it's going to be a difficult task, to be quite honest with you. Just get us out of those players. I do not want to be involved whatsoever. Man United losing as well always helps my weekend drastically. It's absolutely fantastic. And obviously Leeds United getting the win on Friday night. Ipswich picked up a win. Very, very jarring. But I think the context applied with Ipswich is they're going to be there till the end of the season. I think we've said, and I've said multiple times, I think people are sleeping on them. And the reason I've mentioned that, as I've explained several times, is because it's always been Leeds and Southampton. Well, now Ipswich are five points ahead of Southampton. This is what I was trying to illustrate not long ago. The exact same thing with, um, you know, with Russell Martin, as we've said on this channel for the best part of three or four months. It's going to be interesting to see how he fits when it comes to a period of tough games. I'm not, I've never been that convinced on Russell Martin. You know, I'm not 100% sure on him as a manager. I'll delve into that maybe a little bit later on when it comes to the, the end position of Southampton and, and all this sort of stuff. But there is potential that after flying and flying and flying like they have been doing, they end up finishing fourth. But it's strange and funny how these things work, you know, we're speaking about Southampton, you know, going away with Leicester at one point when there were 21, 22 games, must have been 21 games, um, winning, winning run or unbeaten, I should say. Within that, they had a winning run as well. And then the championship being the championship has made that they've conceded three goals to Huddersfield, they've conceded three goals to Bristol City and, you know, they've lost to Millwall and, and, and lost the whole city. It's been a, a, a strange, strange period of time, but... The beauty of what Leeds have been doing is, like I keep saying, we just keep winning. We keep on trucking. And you're going to be, you're not going to be able, be able to, to be questioned in this division if you continue winning. You know, your fate is in your own hands. And it is with Leeds at this moment in time. We've got a massively superior goal difference to Ipswich because Ipswich just concede that many goals. We, in my opinion, are a better team than Ipswich better quality, better calibre. And now we are looking at Ipswich because we're both five points ahead. We're both stuck on 72 points. And at this moment in time, it's changed from Southampton versus Leeds to Ipswich versus Leeds. <laughs> it's strange how, it, how it's turned. At one point, it was Ipswich, Southampton and Leeds weren't even in the race. And I think the resurgence of Leeds has just been absolutely impeccable. It's been unbelievable. And I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And I think when you don't, you know, just having a general chat when you're looking at these these Premier League we spoke about yesterday on the three things if you haven't checked that out make sure you go do so but we spoke about the Premier League venture potentially coming to to our our, our shores the Ellen Road shores and I think there's there's a lot of things that do need to improve and we sort of saw that on Friday night and you know I think maybe in those central spaces leagues need to be a lot better in the Premier League finding our man those past you know, the passing accuracy has to be so much better when opposition teams have such good defensive and the defensive players and they're able to anticipate, interpret and recover those balls a little bit higher than players in the, in the championship. I think as well, some of our key players, you know, when you look at someone like Somerville, you looked at Friday night and I thought he was nullified for quite a bit of it. And in the Premier League, he's going to be nullified a lot more. So overall, we need to figure out different ways of involving our best players. We need to, and that's going to be, a lot of that is going to be judged on Leeds going out and buying better central players, better defensive players, you know, better players overall who the past selections are better. The decision-making is better to release the likes of Somerville, but Somerville in his own game as well has got to develop, you know, when to drop deep, when to come and collect the ball, when to run in behind. Do I change wings with the other winger? You know, do I go a little bit inverted to re to receive the ball? I thought maybe on Friday night he was sort of maintaining that wide position, and when you made, when maintain that wide position, and the, the in Chowdhury's case, he's been very very aggressive with you, and and any touch you have, he's not allowing you to turn, he's not allowing you to run at him. You know, Somerville was sort of isolated, and you saw that at the end, Ampadu was going up to him saying, "You know, cheer up, we've won." 
you could tell he's only a young lad and his performance was very much isolated, I thought. So a few things that we need to look at really, and I think that will happen to Rutter. I think you're going to get very, very good central midfielders coming up against Rutter. We know that at any level at Premier League, at the Premier League stage. And that is something Rutter's going to have to get used to. He can't get frustrated. He can't get out of the game. He's got to just keep on trying. The decision-making from him has got to be better. Obviously, we mentioned on the previous video, it was 21 times he lost the ball in that first half. It's got to be better than that because in those 21 times, especially if they're from deep, the opposition teams will score against Leeds United. It is just fact in the Premier League. So all these things rode on. You know, we mentioned the other day on the three things that that we learned, you know, Rodon needs someone next to him who is going to be proactive on that ball, who's going to be productive in bringing that ball out of that defensive phase. All of these things that we saw on Friday night, I've learned a lot. You know, we did the three things, but I did learn a lot with, I'm not judging all of our players on Friday night, but we should judge them as well. You know, it was the highest caliber team that we will face in terms of individual quality. It's Premier League quality. When you look at some of their players, it is ridiculous that they're at this level. So when they do get to the Premier League, which I think Leicester City will do, you know, right now it's good as a bit of a litmus test for us to look at them and think, right, okay, this is how we're going to fare a little bit in the Premier League with this 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 sort of calibre right now. But I think if you're looking at the overall picture, if you're looking at it positively and you're taking things away from that, it's not only sort of the things that Leeds need to improve on when it comes to, you know, some of us play, when it comes to central spaces, vertical phases, defensive press, and who needs to be part of a defensive partnership for us to be successful in the top division, or successful being relative, I should say. But it's also real real positive things. You know, in that game the other night, once again, Glenn Kamara stepped up. And I think Glenn Kamara, you know, he's played Champions League football before. I think in the Premier League, he will step up. And I'd mentioned players who I think are going to give you a bit of a guarantee. The other night, I'd mentioned players who, you know, you're sort of looking at and thinking, yeah, they're a shoe in at Premier League level. Before the Leicester game, I mentioned that. But now you're looking at some of these players and it, it, that was a bit of a ding-dong Premier League game the other night, I thought. And some players stepped up to the mark, I thought. You know, Leeds won the game, of course, but you, know, you looked at some individual players in that game. You looked at Archie Gray being able to play on the right and the left against Mavadidi at one point and Fatu on the other. We know he can play centrally as well. I think Fatu had been taken off, to be fair to him, when he moved to that left-hand side. But still, on that right-hand side, they're all, they'll always possess danger, Leicester when McAteer came on. So, overall, you, you've looked at Ethan Ampadu in that, in that second half and as a defensive structure, I thought he was so much better than he was in the first. Groever thought it was a little bit quiet, which I found interesting. But Bamford came on, James came on, they made a massive difference. But when we go up to the Premier League, your Bamfords and your James have to be improved on. They're the type of players that we need. But your Bamford and your James, in my opinion, have to be improved on by better quality players. Players who can press, players who can work like Bamford and James do. But what we can't do, you reward players, of course, by getting to the Premier League. But we can't get to the Premier League and just rest on our laurels like we did after the first season of staying up. And I remember, I remember this because I was getting absolutely battered for it. Oh, you've been too negative. You've been too pessimistic when I was saying we just need to literally, Furpo and Dan James wasn't enough. We need to do so much to this side. Oh, you've been negative. We've finished ninth. Leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. I remember that. And that was about 80% of the fan base. You know, we can't have this sentiment when we go up this time. If we are to go, which I think we will. We're all basing this on if we're going up, but I think we will go up. I think the form that was shown in 2024, the change in the side has been amazing. Something I didn't expect. A player stepping up, rotation, all those players stepping up as well when they've been, you know, off the cuff and coming into this side. But I think overall, when we get up there, there needs to be surgery. I really do to this side. Got a nice framework. Got, you can see, nice bits of which leads need to, you know, keep there. But I think a lot of it, we need to be looking and being ruthless. I do not want us to be as sort of, sentimental when it comes to us going up and keeping hold of these players a lot of these players you know they've done a job in the championship but you know we need to improve on a lot of them in the Premier League um, but overall I'm so happy with where we are now and I trust all these players right now to get leads into the Premier League I really do they've been excellent and, and, and they deserve a lot of credit a lot of credit they go to this Chelsea game on Wednesday we're going to have a preview for that but you go to the Chelsea game you just give it your all and see what happens 
you know, see what happens. Huddersfield coming up then, Stoke, we've got winnable games, um, but we still need to be getting these points on the board. Guys, let me know what you think when it comes to the Premier League complexion. Are you are you of my thought process when it comes to improving on certain individuals? How do you think the top four race is looking now? Do you think Southampton are going to drop out now? Do you think that's a little bit naive? Do you think it's going to be between Leeds and Leicester, Leeds and Southampton? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you want some bonus content, head on over to the Patreon. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure as always. Like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you in a bit.